Y'all, it is 9 p.m. on a Sunday before the PTR has ended, and I wanted to cover the Shadow Surfer, this fantastic build that uses Ultimate Shadow Blood Wave and Flicker Step and Blood Orbs to reduce cooldown. It was so much fun to play in Season 2. I found a way to make it work in Season 3, and I figured that in Season 4, this was the time to fully make this build work. We had so many powerful tempering aspects. The way that your like legendary aspects on gear work together just seemed to be in the perfect place possible. On top of that, they increase the base scaling of it to work with your weapon damage, and since we always put it onto a two-handed weapon, it always did ridiculous damage. Here's the problem though, uh, Ultimate Shadow Blood Wave is like wildly, wildly, wildly bugged, doesn't work like anything else in the game. Both fails to multiply its damage in ways that basically reduces its total output by about a factor of 10, like a solid 10 times damage output, while simultaneously getting double bonuses from stats that it shouldn't get double bonuses from. So this video is going to be a decently long like mechanical breakdown of what's happening. I'm going to try to make it as concise as possible, but you, the player, need to walk away with a better understanding of how this all works so that you can build this effectively until they change something. There's not going to be a lot of timestamps here. It's just going to be showcased after showcase after showcase of bug because there's a lot of them and we need to talk about them. And hopefully by the end of it, you have everything that you need to know to be able to build this in season four. We fully intend on putting at the very least an experimental build guide out for this on max roll. So look forward to that when season four drops. But let's go ahead and get into it. It's it's bananas wild, y'all. So first, let's go ahead and talk about what Blood Wave does. Blood Wave is one of the ultimate skills in the skill tree that you probably very rarely used unless you were like a Blood Lance or a Blood Search Andy. And what it basically says is that you shoot out this big wave of blood that deals a pretty decent amount of damage and knocks back enemies. The weird part about its damage scaling is that it doesn't do 150% of its weapon damage like to each target hit seemingly or at the very least if it does it's a wildly small amount of damage you'll also notice that it has like a pretty decently long cooldown and a pretty small lucky hit chance and this has become just like every other area of effect damage skill since it can hit a lot of stuff they want the lucky hit chance to be as small as possible for some reason even though bone spear hits everything on the screen multiple times per its own proc and has more than double the total lucky hit chance, but we're not here to complain about Bone Spear, we're here to talk about Broken Blood Wave. So when I cast Blood Wave, it's going to roll out and do some damage to the target. Wow, where's the fanfare? Let me go ahead and edit in some fanfare here. The reason why we would ever possibly use this skill actually for damage is the reason that we can also be using ultimate shadow ultimate shadow as an aspect says that blood wave will create desecrated ground a keyword that they added not that long ago and it will deal shadow damage over time the moment that you add shadow damage over time to any skill you open up a wide array of multipliers to be able to increase its damage and that's the cool part about blood wave testing it is incredibly simple because its damage is completely normalized. So while I have some gear on here, the only one that's actually increasing how much damage I currently do is Cadaverous Wand. It has 75 intelligence. The boots don't increase damage, but they will be important later, as well as our amulet doesn't increase damage. So when I cast Blood Wave here with Ultimate Shadow, you'll notice that we're doing 3,232 damage. If you were unaware, Every single skill in the game takes into account your weapon, as well as the skill's inherent variance. That means that since your weapon has a 50% variance between the minimum and the maximum damage, and then the skill has a variance between, and then your skill has variance of 20%, Every single skill has a variance of 80%. It's something that's kind of hard to catch, and this is why you can get such weird outcomes from trying to test. When your base damage is 80% less than your maximum damage, it's hard to really capture what does and does not change our damage. Now that I've faffed for long enough though, let's go ahead and cast Blood Wave again, and let's see how much damage Ultimate Shadow Blood Wave does. We're doing whopping 3,232 damage. If you remembered roughly 50 seconds ago, that's the exact amount of damage that we were doing previously. 
So if we're always doing a base amount of 3,232 damage, no matter how many times I cast Blood Wave, it's actually incredibly easy to test what does and doesn't work with this skill because you just have direct multipliers. We don't have to worry about variance at all. In fact, I'm just gonna prove the point again. Let me go ahead and do that. And an ultimate shadow comes out and deals 3,232 damage. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba. We're loving it. Now we have a basis to test everything else off of. And I promise you that testing is about to get wild. But what a lot of people may not necessarily understand about Ultimate Shadow is that it does a lot more than just add this shadow damage over time. It actually completely reimagines the skill. It adds an additional skill tag to it. So Blood Wave will now say Ultimate Skill, Blood, which it should, and then Darkness. That's right, everything that works with a Darkness skill now works with Shadow Blood Waves. You can use it with Shadow Blight, you can use it with Gloom, you can use it with Terror in your skill tree, and you will see increases in the damage that the skill does. So if I were to add Gloom to this target, meaning if I were to do Shadow Damage to it three times with the skill, and then hit it with Blood Wave, we should see an 18% increase in its damage. Let's go ahead and do that with, or let's go ahead and do that with Reap. One, two, three, Shadow Blood Wave, and we're now doing 3,814 damage, 3,814. Let's go ahead and take this over, and if we were to take this thing and divide it by this thing, we get an 18% or a 1.18 multiplier in damage. So that means that every single time that we have anything that modifies darkness skills or does shadow damage, now we can add that to our Blood Wave. But question for you what about coalesce blood while healthy your blood skills deal an increase in 18 percent damage it's a blood skill it's also a darkness skill but theoretically if this proct ability is coming from that skill increasing your skill damage with it should increase how much damage it does well, let's go ahead and cast Blood Wave again. We are getting a 1.18 multiplier because it's a blood skill and we cast it and we see a whopping return of 3,232 damage. Well, sadly, 3,232 damage is the base damage we were doing before. So for whatever reason, even though this says when your darkness skills would hit a target, increase your shadow damage, which is what we're now doing, increasing your blood skill damage doesn't actually scale the damage over time that the Desecrated Ground does. So that's the first thing that I truly consider to be a bug, or at the very least an unintuitive interaction. Since it is a blood skill, and the damage over time, even though it is shadow damage, is being triggered by a blood skill, anything that increases your blood skill damage should increase this damage, and sadly it doesn't. So in this first way, even though Blood Wave is a blood skill, increasing the amount of damage that the Desecrated Ground does from that skill does not benefit from overpower damage, since it's damage over time, it doesn't increase from blood skill damage, and it doesn't increase from physical damage. No, only scaling its shadow damage is what's going to work here. While unintuitive may not necessarily be a bug, so you can go ahead and just sweep that one under the rug. Let's talk about the next actual real bug here. And that's the fact that even though it's a damage over time effect and every single damage over time effect in the game stacks when you add more of them using the title aspect, which shoots out three blood waves, doesn't triple your damage over time. Let's go ahead and look at that in real time. So I have my title blood wave ring on here. It has no other damage modifiers to it. It's just gonna fire out two more blood waves. And those two blood waves are only going to deal a portion of their base damage. But as we just established, the damage from the aspect is seemingly not tied to the skill itself. So this damage should be unaffected. And what we should get is a tripling of its damage total output. And to be able to better express this, let me go ahead and show you casting multiple corpse explosions when we use blighted corpse explosion for shadow damage over time here. So as I see, I have it skilled right here. We have multiple 
uh, corpses on the ground here. I'm going to cast one corpse explosion. We're doing 67 damage. Another one, we're doing 125. And then a third one, we're doing 206. Again, any damage over time effect on the ground has always stacked historically in this game, whether it's the Blighted Pool, Ultimate Shadow Bone Storm, which also stacks, interestingly enough, Blighted Corpse Explosion, even the damage over time from Sever with Graves of the Empty Tomb, or Blood Soaked on Blood Mist, etc. It has always stacked on the target. But interestingly enough, title doesn't. So I'm going to go ahead and cast my ultimate shadow blood wave. We're doing 3,232 damage and we still are and we still are. So for the purposes of this build, title does not increase your damage output. While it does make it so that there are three overlapping blood waves, meaning that like the total amount of time that they are dealing damage over is closer to about 10 seconds as opposed to four seconds, which absolutely is a damage increase. The actual values of that damage over time are not stacking. So unless the monster is standing directly inside of it the entire time, there's absolutely no benefit. The only difference, though, is that with the multiple blood waves, you are generating multiple instances of impact damage, which is negligible, but something as well as increasing how long monsters are slowed for and how many blood orbs that you make. So we can kind of ignore this one we can kind of chalk it up to it's more utility than damage but i don't think that anybody assumed that using an aspect that says that you do three times as many of your ultimate skill wouldn't triple the damage output that's kind of wild and now here's the second problem with title and that's how all of this interacts with the desecrated glyph in your paragon board Desecrated is a glyph that says that desecrated ground effects in this game gain an additive damage bonus. But on top of that, while standing in a desecrated ground area, you're going to deal 15% increased shadow damage. And this is a problem that I have with title. While the actual effect of ultimate shadow is that it adds the desecrated ground tag to the damage that title's AOE damage over time effect does, for whatever reason, it doesn't gain the 15% damage multiplier. In fact, there's only three things in this game that give the Desecrated Ground title. There is Ultimate Shadow from here, Greaves of the Empty Tomb with Sever, and then Blood Soaked for Blood Mist, which also grants the Desecrated Ground. And only Sever with Greaves of the Empty Tomb works. Let's go ahead and start off with the title though, because this will be the easiest thing to see in real time. For the test to make sense, we do have to cast Blood Wave since we have added on a ton of additive damage. So when I just cast regular Blood Wave, I'm now doing 14,597 damage. And since we're now doing 14,597 damage with the additive damage, that's actually kind of huge. Just adding on this one thing is over a 4.5 total multiplier of our damage. Let's go ahead and use Title. Title is going to make it so that when the first blood wave goes out, it will leave behind desecrated ground. And then standing in that blood wave, we should then get a multiplier on the next damage instance. And then obviously it should carry over for the third damage instance, but it shouldn't go up at that point. Let's go ahead and use blood wave, stand on the blood wave. And we're not getting a damage multiplier. We're still getting 14,597, which just to remind you is the number that you see right here. But interestingly enough, if I were to hit this target with Sever, which would leave behind Desecrated Ground, and then cast Blood Wave, and let me just go ahead and remove all my rings so that nothing is being modified here, I will see a damage increase here. So I'm going to hit it with Sever, and then I'm going to cast Blood Wave, and Blood Wave is now doing 17,000, or rather 16,787. 787 which if I were to show you the data and I were to take this number right here and divide it by this number right here, what I get is a whopping 15% damage indicator. So right there we see the desecrated ground is working from the sever boots, but not from the blood wave itself. And I've also already tested with blood soaked on blood mist. It already doesn't work here either. I'm not going to bore you to tears with the testing just because it'll take me another minute to reset the cooldown, but it also doesn't work with that. So it's only with the sever boots with the sever skill and i don't know what's up with that one that never worked that way before but like sure why not 
Now here's the last issue with this, and this one's uh, much more insidious. And if I haven't already, let me just go ahead and thank both Sir Kay as well as Ava, who turned me on to a lot of these different issues. I went to start testing Shadow Surfer, Blood Wave, and I realized that title was no longer ramping its damage. And what I realized is that back in the day, it also wasn't ramping its damage, uh, but I had always misattributed the auto casting corpse explosions, as well as a lot of the different multipliers from my own build that were then increasing its damage. Whereas before, none of these things were actually impacting titles impact on the build. And while title is generally good for reducing cooldown from the more blood orbs, uh, you are missing out on a ton of damage by using it. So it's kind of interesting, this duality of like, the things that we were using were good for the build, but they weren't the best things for the build for what we thought they were doing. They were just kind of different. But I just want to give a huge shout out to both Ava, uh, everybody in GMS and Sanctuary, as well as Sir K, just because as I was coming across like some of these different things, I'd shoot them off to them. They respond with the things that they were already aware of. And then I was able to put together this like kind of comprehensive list of things. But as always, it's just like phenomenal when the community kind of comes together and shares their knowledge. And we're all able to have a better understanding of the game because of that. So just like massive props to them. So what I have for you is a ring that only says 80 and intelligence and then a ring that only says 80 intelligence as well as 23 additive damage and let's go ahead and see what the base damage is with this ring and then how much damage we get out of it with this ring and let me just go ahead and just like cut to the chaser a little tldr we're gonna pull back the curtain it's different than what you would expect it to be so just with the 80 intelligence on the build, I go ahead and cast my blood wave and we're now doing 3,439. Now, if I were to swap out this ring with a ring that adds on 23% additive damage with no other multipliers, what we should see is a 1.23% increase in the damage of blood wave. So let's go ahead and put this on. Let's cast blood wave and we're now doing 5,020 damage. Mm, 5,020 damage is a lot more than a 23% increase. If I were to take this and take this and divide it by this, we get a 45% increase in damage. And if you look at it and we were to round it down, let me just go ahead and decrease the number of sig figs here. You'll see a total increase of 46% damage. I'll go ahead and tune you into something real quick. Uh, 23 times two, is 46. That's right. The base stat damage on the Necromancer is now increasing your damage over time by two exits value. Now, this is not something that's completely new to the video game. In fact, the rogue historically has always been able to benefit from a two times increase in damage to damage over time effects. And this is something that didn't previously apply to the Necromancer for whatever reason. But in season four's PTR code base, it now does. And let me just be abundantly clear. This is absolutely a bug regardless of how you look at it. You're not supposed to double dip on damage or damage over time effects specifically. There's no reason for it to happen. The only thing that I can possibly think of is that all skills are inherently coded as a base skill. And as such, they gain the benefits of a damage roll, a flat damage roll of just 23%, or not so much a flat damage roll, but a generic damage roll of 23%. And then when they are modified into damage over time effects, they then gain the 23% base damage roll again. For whatever reason, it's double dipping. And the funny part being that damage over time rolls don't double dip. So in a perfect world, you actually get more out of base damage rolls than you get out of damage over time rolls on your gear currently for builds like Shadow Surfer or Blighted Corpse Explosion or Blight builds or Sever builds that are also dipping into Corpse Explosion for damage over time. So while I'm still going to test what the best version of Shadow Surfer looks like, most assuredly on my next stream which should be on monday if you'd like to watch it either on twitch or on youtube i stream on both of them and we are going to figure out like the best way to build it but it is wild that sitting down in the ptr right now i was only recently made aware of the vast majority of these builds again shout outs to both ava and sir k who are able to fill in the gaps in my knowledge as far as this worked and help me to better understand the things that I was seeing before and what was actually happening there. But I hate it. 
I really do hate it. I hate it so much. This really plays into the video I put out recently. If you didn't see it, a lot of people were basically telling me I shouldn't report bugs when they empower the Necromancer because the Necromancer is due its day in the sun. It's meant to have a broken build that outperforms everything else. And the worst part about it is not only is the Necromancer, I think, the healthiest class in the game, we basically have like the least amount of game breaking bugs. We had the least amount of snapshotting that was available when that was more prevalent in the game. We are just a very, very fair class that outputs competitive clear speed and even gets like second highest clear speeds in the gauntlet or even third highest behind Sorceress and Rogue, depending on the week. But when we find stuff like this, where the bugs are literally cutting your damage by a power of 10, like title should triple your damage over time. It just should. That's just how damage over time effects work. And the reason that putting damage over time on your build is like subpar to putting regular damage on your build, losing us out on a ton of additional additive damage for our build. And then on top of that, Desecrated Ground not working for uh, Blood Wave itself, meaning that you have to activate it only very specifically with Sever and the Greaves of the Empty Tomb, or you're missing out on a 15% damage multiplier is quite literally a 10 times reduction in overall damage if you were to sit down and do the math and look at how many of these stats you can get in Masterwork and Temper, etc. So it's just incredibly frustrating. I hope desperately, and I've already reported this all to the developers, so like at the very least they're aware of it, whether or not it makes it into the changes for Season 4, or if we see them in the mid-season patch will be like up to them basically to decide. I just wish... The things did what they said in the game when you put them together and that you got the result that you expected. But as it stands, I'm going to try to build this thing as best as I can. Look forward to that coming out soon. I do think that the build is still good enough to warrant a build guide, at least an experimental build guide on max roll. So look forward to that in season four. I hope that you enjoy it. If you are new here or if you're a returning viewer and you've never considered it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I hope that people have been enjoying the content that we've been putting out and the level of deep dive and analysis I've been able to do on the class. And while I can pat myself on the back, mostly it would just be really nice if I could see the continued growth of the channel and that more nerds who may benefit from seeing these videos were more likely to see it in their algorithms. Similarly, if you wouldn't mind tossing a like onto the video, I would super appreciate that as well. And let me know if you found any other weird, broken, miscellaneous, uh, you know, uh, in, just impossible to really validate or you just have a hunch that something isn't working right, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. If you've never seen my comment section before, I tend to try to answer the vast majority of content down there. So if you have a question, let me know. Similarly, you can go ahead and join the Discord down in the description below. We have a ton of nerds in there just like testing the vast majority of things that they possibly can and typically coming up with some cool stuff that eventually bubbles all the way back up to the top and you inevitably see in a video here. But thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that it helps you build your favorite version of Shadow Surfer in Season 4. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.